video by Andrew Broussard, Watercolors. This video today um, won't involve any painting or really any drawing. It's more of a discussion, an idea development, and uh, just put out a lot of just general information out there. This one is in response to a patron member who had said that they were interested in learning about barns within rural landscapes. So I figured you know, it would be kind of good just to get a discussion out there going, just get things, um, the cobweb shake, shaken off. It's been about a year since I've painted just like kind of like a big old barn. And once in a while I'll add a barn within just like the background scenery. So I figured that'd be a um, good thing just to discuss. So let's call this discussing discussing barns. So I'm not sure what uh, level you all are at or how much experience you guys have with this. So I'm going to start kind of from the basics and kind of build up, um, probably come up with ideas as I write this out and as I discuss this with you. And hopefully this provides you with a lot of information. And then from there, I'll do some... Um, watercolor videos where we'll start incorporating them in there. I would like to incorporate them in um, the oil painting scenes. That's just something I haven't done yet. And um, within the sketching, we do have a little bit of building starting to get involved in there as well. So it'll start, um, hopefully start making uh, its way back into our paintings. Anyway, so location. So now the first thing, location, we could have the back, the mid, or the foreground. So that might seem like common sense, but we can have a different approach for each one of these. So let me um, draw an ABC in box, ABC. background, All right? B, mid, and then let's do this one for the foreground. Okay. So um, between these, there's the, the concept of um, the perspective and how it sits within it, obviously the size, and our approach to painting each one of these can be different. Now, there might be some overlap between the back and the mid, and there can be some overlap between the mid and the foreground with our approaches. But let's um, talk about different approaches that we can use in order to make these things happen. So A, so background. Now, with the background, there's a lot of different ways we can do this. We could have a light sky. And then simply just paint over it. We can use masking fluid. I haven't used masking fluid in a long time. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure why I haven't used it in a long time, but it could really, you could put it in the form of a barn and make it super simple, paint over it, and lift it off. Sometimes it does leave just the pure white of the paper, so you'd have to kind of paint back into it and do a wash over it, and that might have been where I was lacking whenever I was um, using masking fluid. Now, tape. If you want, you could take your roll of masking tape, or they actually sell a double wide painter's tape, and painter's tape is what you really want to go with, or masking tape, where you'd want to get the tackiness out of it, put it down, and um, whenever you lift it, you have less chance of tearing the paper. So you could put tape in that space, and you can cut it to the shape you want. Okay. 
So another option now, this is the one that I utilize the most for background is um, scraping. This is using a card. Now, whenever you use that, you're going to want a wider, the more, um, the natural edge that came with the card. And that is going to help you get that wide stroke with it in order to get that scrape to take place. And then you could do two or three scrapes and you can get the illusion of a um, barn back in there. So light sky, paint barn, masking fluid, tape, scraping. There are some other ones. I do wet and wet. That, that's the way I always like start off my paintings. But I can try to um, leave barn dry. I believe this is something that I've done in the past where I don't think I have it on video. But I could take a smaller brush and wet around the shape of the barn itself. Okay, so there's a lot of different approaches that you can take, light sky, um, all that, mask fluid, wet and wet, etc. And having that variety there, finding out which one works for you, um, it'll really help work out. Now, with B, a lot of these things will um, take place as well. And with C, the approach will work. However, um, scraping for me does not work. Okay. So here we start thinking about something kind of almost completely different. We approach it, complete, a painting completely differently. Um, the wet and wet leave the barn dry. That's usually the way I would wind up approaching it. I would almost uh, do a kind of wet brushing in the sky where the sky itself isn't completely wet, where the ground itself isn't completely wet and let that illusion take place. But scraping does not um, work for me for there. For here, and it's interesting, we could add another overlap. We could do a, um, a flat brush. We can use flat brushes as well here. And this is for this foreground. And that um, is to help model the planes of these. So. Let me write that on the side as a idea. Flat brush, scraping. This helps create planes. This is just um, due to the kind of brush stroke the scrape stroke giving us that um, the side of the barn that we're looking at. So these are just uh, essentially just painterly techniques that you can utilize. Um, with these guys, we can use uh, smaller brushes. For some detail. And I found that um, here, the flat brushes, you're, you're going to be doing essentially a portrait of the building. So there's just a lot more taking place. You're going to utilize a variety of brushes, at least two brushes. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and this is where you, uh, another one that I used on here, and I'll talk about it in a bit, spray bottle. This gives us directional movement. Okay. So once again, still just trying to cover um, applications and movement of paint. Now let's discuss on this next one, what we want to keep in mind. Okay, so let's first talk about color. Let's do white, of course. Now, with the white, um, we can get that, like I had said, through masking fluid, through um, blocking out, through leaving things out. So we could get just the white of the paper. I find that if you use uh, white paint, you want that for the more foreground object. Now, I'm not sure if foreground has an E at the end of, right after the R. I apologize for that. Um, that's something that I always, always forget. Anyway, so um, if you use white paint, I find that it helps for the foreground because in the background, it will kind of um, give us, it, it'll, it'll kind of mess with perspective, at least for me. Now, experiment with it, try it out, see what you think. Whenever I had started with Bonds, there was the artist Rick S that I follow online. Um, and he has his Facebook page and he, he has a lot of tutorials and whatnot. And he has some barn paintings. Um, I learned from him, Ultramarine. And Rossian uh, Burnt. This gives like a really interesting combination with our grays. And it lets us push it to warm and cool. So this gives us a uh, potential pushing of back and forth um, variety within the colors. Um, you can just do very simple for foreground. Sorry, background. Well, you can also um, go to town with the foreground. So those uh, right there, that would be a very good starting point. Um, you could play around with Payne's gray. Or maybe a black. This is for uh, darkening objects. This is for a shadow. Um, you can utilize those uh, and play around with it. More commonly, you'll see Payne's gray in palettes. With the black, um, people seem to kind of look down upon, frowned upon. However, it I'll probably wind up using black, but um, 
don't let people judge you. Let's write that. Don't let people judge you. Okay. The reason people frown upon that is that they believe that it um it deadens the color. Um and also people uh, our teachers will believe that that's a crutch for um, people painting. Meaning that, oh, I need to make this darker. Let me add black. Well, an art teacher would be like, okay, you want to make it darker. Let's see what other combination of colors we could mix into it. What can we play around with it? Um, so try both. Try mixing darks. But also, you know, try black and see what works for you. What you enjoy utilizing. Um, at the end of the day, the people that, I mean, unless it's a competition and you're um, submitting it or tr you're selling paintings and all that, the people judging you, what does it matter? Who cares? You know, do what you want to do with that. Now, another interesting uh, color option is raw sienna. And um, light red oxide. And these are all common on the. Let's uh, do this. Come on the Ron Ransom palette. which is just a collection of seven colors. Um, lemon yellow, raw sienna, burnt sienna, um, burnt umber, light red oxide, um, alizarin, or maybe it's uh, eight colors, um, ultramarine blue, and Payne's gray. And that kind of just gets you started off with a small amount of paint that you don't have to feel like you're all over the place. And this gives you kind of a terracotta Um, color. This is good for roofs. So these are colors that you can use um, and play around with. Um, like I said, ultramarine burnt sienna to get grays, Payne's gray, raw sienna, and you can use other color options, but these might be um, good starting points and these will be kind of ideas that we will explore within paintings. All right, let's see. So now that we have kind of a concept with barns and the color. Oh, I had used, um, this is Noodler's Heart of Darkness on a Rhodia pad. And the Rhodia pad isn't really absorbent. Like the paint, uh, I believe the ink dries on top. And I'm using a Noodler's Ahab, which is of that brand that I use for the sketching videos. But this one lays down a lot more ink. I had just grabbed it because when I started filming this video, my, one of my writing pens was acting a little scratchy. So I just grabbed this to jump right into it. Okay. So let's see. Let's do barns. Let's say how they sit. And we'll also talk about shapes. So with barns, um, I am not an expert on barns. Uh, you could look up online different barn types and whatnot, but I found that you could have something super simple, like a house shape. You can have these barns that come down and out. There's even barns that come almost rounded on top. I wouldn't be surprised if you could find a barn with a flat top. You could have all these different shapes. Um, look at them. See how those different planes work. If you're doing this from imagination, it'll take a little bit of effort. But um, 
let's see what we can put it together from these basic shapes. So how they sit. So this guy, if I was to turn him on his side, he would look, if you look at him dead on, on the side. You'd have him like this, right? Look at this guy from the side. We'd have the peak, then we'd have this line, then we'd have its actual edge, where we then have that wall, okay? Here, we'd have some of the same concept. That's the garbage man outside. Okay, so front, sorry that I'm side, and then this guy on his side would just look like that as well. So that right off the bat is uh, two potential directions that you could have these. And these would be fine for um, the background or the midground. You could easily take a card and scrape whoop, 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 or whoop, whoop. And have when you scrape, you're going to push some paint and let some paint sit there and then do another scrape. And then you can kind of um, take a rigger or a small brush to kind of put a little bit of detail. So that's if you had it with a small, uh, larger, you do a big study of it. Let's do um, back would be the same. Let's do angle. Now this is where things get hairy. Let's um, look at just a box for a moment. So if I had a corner of something, with perspective, it's gonna recede. Okay, so that's what we wanna keep in mind is perspective with the recession and the lines will appear, to go to a point. If I had I'm not saying overhang roof on this. That line appears to go here. Okay, so we're going to want to keep those ideas in mind with this. Now, um, drawing these off the fly. Let's see. So this guy, if we had his side right here, so this is this front corner. Here is the front where it recedes. The, let's give them back long underneath the roof vertical vertical these guys appear to go there right now the peak of the roof it could overhang and we could have them come back in that fashion now here, these lines are going to want to go to a point as well. And they'll often have an overhang right there. Okay. So look for overhangs. And you could often get these scrapes very easily done in the background as well. Um, with the card, I could go more of a exaggerated shape right there. What might help is to do a series of sketches like this, have those sketches on the side and have them to look at. Maybe let's keep that make sketches for reference. Okay, and you can hold it against that. Now here, this one has that extra bend in it. So first of all, I'm gonna start with that side. And I'm gonna think about that recession that takes place. But I'm also gonna look at the roof. The roof has that, this one has that sharp bend. So it's here, here. Okay, from these, um, the corner of an angle, what is it called, the vert vertice? Vertex, I haven't taught geometry in a long time, so the words sometimes elude me. 
So we want them to recede to a point. So here, I'm receding to a point about here. Okay. This guy is going to recede to that point. And then this guy is going to recede to that point. Okay. Now on the opposite side, we're going to have the front face. And let's see, he's going to a point somewhere out here, let's say. He has his wall coming up. This can be this version and then that version. Okay. So we start getting that shape there. And we'll have the same exact thing happening with this one, except we have that side. He has that rounded type look, and those will extend back as well. You may not even catch that um, top of that one. And then this guy is just a box on the side, which I'm not sure why it, I didn't start off with that one. He's going to be pretty pretty basic, okay? So those are the different um, angles you could play around with. You can then take them, flip them, and have them sit in a different um, way. So for example, if I flip, I'm going to flip this guy right here. And if this is something that you want me to expand, expand upon, like uh, expand upon and have different sketches for y'all, let me know. So I'm going to put the face on this side. So he's going to recede back. Here is, um, just got to get my mind to think that flipped direction. Well, let's see. Why is my mind not working with this one? <laughs> okay. Overhang of roof. And comes back here. For the life of me, I cannot um, get my mind to flip this in my head for this moment. Here's the front. Here's that curve. There it is. Then we have that exaggerated bend. And that exaggerated bend would happen right here, too. There you go. Apologize for that. Okay. So um, the flip, uh, you could use it in either direction. You just have to think about how they're going to travel into the page where those lines will meet up. I didn't do it as exaggerated perspective as I should have. Okay. So um, that's for how they sit in the shapes. Now, an important thing is... Let's start another one. Do how they sit. Part two. Okay. So let's do a, um, simple boxes again where this is our background mid ground and our foreground where we have that big old now at that far distant So A, maybe a little shadow. So you might like cast a little shadow, a little darkening around it. Maybe a small 
bush in front. So if we have that little guy right here, you know, it'll have little specks around it. Small fence. And you could scrape out those fences. You could just get little ideas taking place. But a big thing is counter change. Now, counter change holds true for all of these. And it's very common. If you look at, look at other watercolor paintings, look at other um, barn paintings, they'll often add a dark tree or something like that. And that'll help it sit in place. It adds an area of interest. It um, draws the eye to the spot. And counter change is just light against the dark. And it draws the eye. And this can be done with um, often created with trees. Okay. But uh, colors, simple, details, simple, maybe a window or two. B. All of these hold true. But ground the tree, the ground the barn. And what I mean by that is this is the horizon, this is grass, it helps it set into place. Okay, it gives you the idea that it is within this structure. So that's what I usually see as the major difference between A and B is that grounding, um, the little lip that happens behind it. And then we see in C, there could be potential more exaggeration and that really helps it sit in the plane. A lot of people, now this is me being judgmental and I apologize. Um, people paint fantastic animal portraits. You know, they beautiful dog portraits but they don't have any background or anything like that. They don't have any um, shadow for it. They don't have any um, anything in place. And it just then in turn looks like a dog on paper for me. And if there was just a little bit of something like that gives you a 3D effect. Just a little extra effort. Gives a 3D effect. So that's what I really want you guys to keep in mind is whenever we look at those, that's something we're going to do. And we could um, utilize shadow to ground. Okay, we could also, in this case, put trees behind. Utilize tree once again. So that's uh, another big thing, those trees in order to get the counter change. So I talk about counter change a lot. Um, I don't always use it in every painting, but it is super important. It's something that I need to personally um, always keep in mind, counter change. So always keep that in mind. Now, uh, for C, this is where you really emphasize shadows. And perspective. C. 
since it's such a prominent thing, if we have, let's say, just a simple box, and if this is going to be most of it, so a simple barn, and if you put a um, window in it, see how this line goes out here, this line will come out to there. This line will come out to here. This line should have been more exaggerated to get to here. So you really want to keep in mind the shadows that are taking um, perspective lines. So emphasize that you're going to want to ground it. Look for shadows. Okay, uh, think about, um, let's see if we get a little bit of roof on here. And you want to think about um, <laughs> planes and tones. So what I mean by that with tones, this could be the darker side. Maybe um, the roof isn't catching that much, but maybe we have light here. But then we'd have light along the edge. We'd have shadows being cast. So think about that. Once again, you could put barns in, um, bushes in to start grounding things, fences to make things interesting. You could put, once again, a tree right behind it and help it sit in place. So those are all um, things you want to keep in mind whenever we're working with barns. I had mentioned earlier um, about a spray bottle thing. So let me uh, do an aside. You can draw lines for uh, like planks and boards. So you can you know, paint, draw, but then soften with the spray bottle. And I think I had learned that from the gentleman that I mentioned earlier, Rick, who has a whole bunch of um, painting tutorials online. So that softens the spray bottle, will help um, disperse those lines some and make it seem more natural. Okay. So in this video, we started with. Um, locations that we could go with, uh, different painterly techniques that we can use. We talked about some colors that we can utilize. So pretty basic palette. We don't have to go out of control. Um, I know that red, red barns is like a typical motif. Um, so we'll play around with uh, the basic palette and see how red we can get. Um, that might be something where you'd want to utilize, potentially utilize something like a cadmium red U. But for me personally, that's not something I'm a fan of because like just the way it sits and the opacity, but you can utilize that if you want. You, you can use whatever colors you want with these. Heck, you can use the thalo blue, sorry, thalo green and the quinacridone rose combination to get grays and paint them in that fashion. Um, these are kind of just starting point ideas. Um, we talked about how they sit, uh, for the background, we can do it super simple. We can do, uh, just a super simple scraping or omitting like we had talked about, but, um, you do want to start thinking about perspective and how they sit. And I must just generally think about things in this shape because flipping it, um, twisted my brain a little bit. So, uh, that's something that will 
work on and I need to add to my repertoire. And then um, we talked about how they sit part two, and this is just kind of emphasis on things that we need to talk about. Uh, the bush and his fences, potential counter change, horizon lines. That was the big connection between those two is that there's a little dip and that gives that perspective there. Uh, shadows and planes. Shadows and planes can play a part in these guys as well. Like if he's in the background and he's far away and he's something like this one, three simple strokes, one, two, and then a different color or leaving one white could give us the illusion of barn alone. So I'm going to end this video. Um, I'm going to post this exclusively for Patreon. Um, and for my Patreon members, whenever you guys have questions or anything like that, please feel free to ask. Um, I want to, uh, you know, pr like I thank you guys for your support and I would like to um, do whatever I can to uh, help you with your art progress. And this in turn helps me as well because it gets me thinking about things. All right. Have a great day and I'll talk to you all soon.